Hello! Welcome back to another episode of Full Steam Ahead. This is Science, Technology, Engineering, Art, and Math Crafts for Kids. So we've kind of started with a theme um, over the last couple episodes of switching between an episode of art-focused uh, activities and then an episode of science, technology, engineering, or math-focused activities. And I thought we'd continue with that. So we made spectroscopes for our last episode. So those are instruments that you use to split light into its individual wavelengths and they show up as a rainbow when you look at them, which means today it's art. So we are going to make DIY scratch art. To do this, all you're gonna need is a paper plate, the bigger the better, um, and it needs to actually be a paper plate, not the kind that has like the plastic glossy coating on it. So a paper plate, crayons or oil pastels. I have both. So this is the one I made with oil pastels. Hello, a piece just jumped. And then I have a sample that I also did with crayons. I just have a nice basket of messy crayons here. Um, you're also going to need acrylic paint. It's really important that it's acrylic because it will scrape off. Um, tempera paint, like the water activated paint, doesn't work so well. So it needs to be a dark color of um, acrylic paint so that you can see the colors of the pastels or the crayons beneath it. So I just have like a brown, a very dark green, a purple, and a black. I used the purple for this one. And then you're going to need a nice big paintbrush so that you can cover your plate and your acrylic paint nice and quickly. And a little scraping tool so that you can scrape your scratch art. And let's get started. So this is a super simple, easy craft that you can do with kids of any age. And once they get started, they're going to want to keep doing it over and over and over again. So stock up on those plates and that paint. So your first step is going to be to take your crayons or your um, oil pastels and make some kind of design on the flat part of the, of the plate. Um, with this one, I went all the way to the edge, but I got to tell you, coloring in, because it has to be a really solid color so that you can actually see it through the paint when you scrape the paint off. Um, coloring on this ruffled edge was such a pain, so I recommend you just do the middle part of the plate right here. So I'm going to take my oil pastels and I'm going to just do whatever kind of design I want. In this one, I just did like a sunburst of rainbow. So red and then orange and then yellow and then green and then blue and then purple and then pink. Um, I think on this one, I'm just going to do random crazy colors. I want to never know what I'm going to see when I scrape. So this is a really good art activity to do with kiddos who are learning from home, fulfill the art requirement for the week. Um, you could also, if you want to, um, turn it into a conversation about why the oil pastels don't flake off, although the acrylic paint does. You could turn it into a conversation about the differences between oils and water-based painting products um, and how the acrylic paint flakes right off the oil, but the oil stays there because it is not water-based. So you could turn it into that, or this could just be an art project. So I'm just covering, oh no, there you go, okay. Hmm. You can't press very hard with oil pastels, and I always do it anyway, and then they break. <laughs> Don't be like me. All right, so just color in a random spot with my nice lavender oil pastel. I'm gonna just do like that and then have it stick out a little bit on the edge. Why not? And then what color should I do? Then I'm gonna take really bright green and I'm gonna do a nice little bit right here. And there we go. And like I said at the beginning, you can use crayons for this. That's what I did for the example that I haven't started scratching off yet. And um, I painted that one earlier this morning so that we could test out the crayons. Um, and I will scratch it for you and show you um, how to get going with your design once I have finished coloring this one in. So I just did a little bit of purple, a little bit of green, and now I'm going to throw some goldy yellow in there. I think I want to do that right at the edge right here. Almost like the sun coming up over mountains and one side is in like shade and one side is all covered in green. I really prefer doing this with oil pastels so that you can blend 
the edges of the colors together, but that's like, that's really completely 100% not necessary, uh, especially if you're doing this with kids for an, an art project for the day. Okay, there we go. Got some yellow. Let's do some blue now. Put the blue over to the side near where the green is. Okay. And at any time, by the way, if you're ever having to happening to pass by one of these videos while I'm recording, um, do know that if you comment, I can see it. It pops up on my screen while I'm filming. I'm using an iPad. So it will pop up and I can answer your questions verbally, even though you can't speak to me verbally. Um, so if you have any questions that you want me to answer while I'm recording, um, and I can do that without having to get up and go to a computer. So like if you want to know if a book is in the library, I can't really do that while I'm on video, but I can answer just like general questions. So if you ever have any questions, looking for book recommendations for kids or for adults, because I read the big kids books <laughs> for the most part. Um, or if you ever want to know some like library news, know what we know. Um, if you want to know what kind of programs are going to be happening next week or things like that, please know that you can um, type out your questions in the comment bar and it'll pop up on the screen and I'll be able to see it so that I can answer those questions for you. Um, later this week on Friday, we're going to be doing story time again as usual. Um, Friday is at 10.30, it's toddler story time, virtually of course, and this week I'm going to be doing a counting story time because the deadline for the 2020 census is coming up on the 30th of this month. So in order for us, our community, and our county to get all of the federal funding that we deserve for our various social programs, we need to have an accurate representation of the number of people who need those programs. So we are asking people to very, very conscientiously, please do make sure that you complete your census form. You can do it online. So I will be linking to all of that information on Friday's Facebook Live Storytime post. And for that story time, we will be focusing on counting. So if that's something that's fun for you, don't worry, I'm not going to be sitting there just like talking about the census the whole time since it is a story time, it's for toddlers. <laughs> um, but I will be mentioning that it's for the census and we need to count how many people we have in our county. And we'll just, we're just going to be counting stuff. It's going to be all about numbers. So if that sounds like fun, please do tune in at 1030. Last week I played the ukulele on the camera for the first time, which was terrifying. Just if, in case you didn't know, I don't play any instruments. So playing the ukulele um, where people could actually hear me was nerve wracking. <laughs> but I'll be doing it again now that I've done it once. I don't have an excuse to not do it anymore. So uh, I will be playing the ukulele during story time again this week. I'll probably just be doing the same song, You Are My Sunshine. I do know a couple other ones, but that's the one that's easiest and most appropriate for the age group. So if you want to join us for our census story time on Friday at 1030, I will be playing the ukulele again, yes, and we will be counting and talking about the U.S. Census. So I'm still just coloring in the paper plate with the oil pastels, and then we're going to get with adding the acrylic layer on top so that we can make our DIY scratch art. All right. I'm almost done. I'm just doing random blocks of color here. For the first one, I did like a rainbow starburst, but for this one, I just want it to be wild and crazy. I have this so far. I just have one more little bit to color in right there. I'm going to do pink because pink is my favorite color. Here we go. And almost done. And again, if you're ever watching and you think of a question or you have something that you'd like me to talk about, um, if you ever have any questions about the digital resources we have available for preschool and school age kids, or if you'd ever want to know about what kind of virtual programs we're doing, or if you have any library questions or you want book recommendations, please know that if you comment um, on one of these Facebook Live videos, I do see your post like it'll pop up on my screen while I'm filming and I will be able to answer your question. All right, so I have done my little 
There we go. You can kind of see the colors now. I've colored it all in in the center and now I'm going to put um, a thin but solid layer of acrylic paint all around it. So you want it to be um, dense enough that you can't see any of the colors through the paint, but it needs to be pretty thin so that it'll scrape off and it'll dry relatively quickly. So I'm just going to do, first I'm going to blow off my extra oil paint or uh, oil pastels. <laughs> Blending, yay, I love oil. Okay, so now I'm going to do some dots. I'm using the brown because I kind of like the effect that gives of acrylic all around the paper. That should be enough. No! I just dumped the lid into a big blob of paint. So silly of me. All right, so I just covered it in dots and now I'm just gonna take my brush and I'm going to cover all of the really pretty bright colors that I just put down so that all you can see is the brown acrylic paint. And you wanna cover it so that you cannot see any of the colors of the oil pastels peeking through. Otherwise, what's the fun? It's not a surprise when you scratch your art then. Okay. And while this would be a really fun project to do with kids, outside <laughs> or on top of newspaper or something. Um, while this would be a really fun project to do with kids, like have, have them do the pastels or the crayons themselves and then cover over it with the paint. Um, this is also just a really fun like surprise activity. So you could do all of the coloring with the pastels or the crayons um, and then cover it with the paint and then give them like a toothpick or um, this is a, what's it called? Skewer, like for kebabs. Um, you could give them just the plate and a skewer and be like, now start scratching on it and see uh, how excited they get when they realize that there's color under there. So this could go a couple different ways. All right, so I'm just adding a tiny bit more paint because I can still see some of the color coming through. There you go. Cover it up. Okay, can you see any of it? Okay, so now I've got a nice thin layer of brown acrylic paint. So I'm gonna let that dry, but that's why I made one this morning so that we can do one together. All right, so you're just gonna let that dry. I didn't cover up the ruffles on the side because that is such a pain. <laughs> but if you wanna do that to make it look nice, I highly recommend it. So now all you need to do once your uh, scratch art has dried is you just grab your little scraping tool and you go nuts and you start scraping away. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scrape a circle around the edge of the plate. And now, if you are wanting to turn this into a little bit of a science lesson, is where you would start talking about how the acrylic scrapes up because it's water-based, but the crayon or the oil pastel stays on the plate because the wax or the oil, depending on which one you're using, is much, much more difficult to remove. All right. Now I will say, if you're using crayons instead of oil pastels, it's gonna be a little harder for you to scrape up a nice, neat line because the acrylic paint doesn't stick to the oil pastel quite so well as it sticks to the wax of the crayon. So you'll see like I just scraped and this big, huge piece just came off. It's not a bad thing. Um, but if you want to be able to do nice, neat lines, you might want to try to use oil pastels instead of crayons. But if you don't have oil pastels, I don't want you to have to go out and get any. That's not the purpose of this. We're trying to use things you've got at home. Um, then just go ahead and stick with your crayons. It still works. So I just did a circle all the way around. And I think now I want to do a heart in the middle. Why not? Let's do a heart. I'm just going to do a little outline so I know where to scrape. There we go. And now scrape away. Now because I did this one just like maybe four or five hours ago, it's not 100% dry. So that's also why I'm kind of peeling up slightly bigger pieces. If you can let them dry overnight, it'll work much better. Um, this one dried overnight and then I um, scraped it the next morning. But, and this is also something that you could easily 
incorporate. So you know how we do like um, sometimes when we when we can, we would do crafts at the end of a of a weekly story time. So like uh, if we read I don't know Owl Babies for a story time, we would then make like a craft out of cotton balls and make little baby fluffy owls. So if you want to do like a story time that's fall themed or autumn themed, you could then color your paper plate with autumnal colors and then cover it with some acrylic paint. And then you could use it as a themed craft and like scrape leaves or something out of it. So this doesn't have to be just a random art project. You can make it fit with whatever the theme for, for what you're doing for that week is when you're learning from home. So I just scraped a heart and now I think I want to do little starbursty lines going all the way around it. So I'm going to do that real quick. And then I think we're going to be done for today. Today's a nice, easy arts and crafts project. Next week, we're going to be making a grow your own crystal garden. So if that's something that you would be interested in learning how to do, we will be talking about how to grow your own crystals overnight in the refrigerator. Um, and then there is an add-on to that craft that we will be talking about not the following week, but the week after that, which is using the leftovers uh, from the crystals that you've grown. So you put your solution in water, uh, and then the water that you discard after you've grown your crystals can be used to grow a crystal sun catcher. So um, we will be doing that not next week or the week after, but the week following that. Okay, so there we go, DIY scratch art. So again, all you need to do this with your kids at home is a paper plate, oil pastels or crayons. I did this one with crayons, this one was done with oil pastels, um, acrylic paint, a paintbrush, something to scrape with, and that's it. All right, so hopefully you can uh, go forth and make some pretty, pretty scratch art with your kiddos at home. Um, and maybe have a conversation about why acrylic scrapes off of oil or wax-based substances so easily, but you certainly don't have to do that. Um, it can just be a fun art project, themed or not. All right, so thank you so much for joining us for Full Steam Ahead. I will see you next week where we will be making crystals, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Happy Wednesday. Bye, everybody.